Yo, what's good guys? We are back at it again with another MLB The Show tier list for you guys. And today I'm going over all of the possible pitchers uh, that I think you guys should be using from a competitive standpoint. Um, so a couple things to mention. Uh, pitching is one of the most subjective things in the game. It depends on what difficulty you're on. Uh, certain pitchers that are good on All-Star aren't very good on Legend. Certain people um that are great on legend are unusable on all-star so it's kind of tough it also what opponent you match with matters a lot uh, i could play somebody on all-star that puts up seven on randy johnson through four innings does that mean randy's a bad pitcher no you could play somebody that cannot touch aj burnett for an entire game you can no hit somebody with aj burnett does that mean aj burnett's a great pitcher no so uh wanted to get that out of the way because there's always comments about this guy's great for me yeah that's cool but it's very subjective for you uh i'm just kind of giving my opinion about who in theory should be the best pitchers so uh we're starting off with bummer everybody's go-to lefty for a reason out of the bullpen right now not a lot of other options other than him um so he's very good in that regard Adovino. A good righty, I don't think he's kind of got the sauce that he's had in the past. He's not uh, dominant, and he's not throwing the sinker very hard. When I face him, I haven't really had any issues against him, but I could see how he could be difficult for a lot of people. Uh, and obviously has very high hits and very high pitch and clutch. Uh, so I could move him up to S, but he's not even in my rotation right now, so I don't know how I could really put him in S tier. Ah, here's the man I was just talking about, Burnett. This card's terrible. Uh, I would not be using this card anymore. He throws like two fastballs, a, and then two breaking balls that aren't very good, if I remember correctly. You can see we have a sinker, a four seam. Yeah, so he basically throws a fastball, a knuckle curve, and a changeup. You basically have a three-pitch starting pitcher, which is not a very good pitcher at all. Not really what you want to be looking for. Big Al. Uh, one of the newer cards in the game. He's just recently became available. It's still very difficult to have 200 cards. He's very good, uh, but I don't think he's worth sprinting to that 200 card mark and spending a ton of stubs or time to get there. Uh, you know, you'll get him when you get him, and he'll still be very good a month from now. It's how Al always plays in game. Uh, always very good on those higher difficulties, Hall of Fame and Legend. Uh, always kind of a question mark on all-star, but on those higher difficulties, there's often he's one of the better options. Um, Munoz, this card's deceptively good. Uh, something about just having the sinker and the outlier four seam and the slider, it's a combo that you don't see with a lot of pitchers. It's what kind of holds like Dibble. Honestly, if you want this archetype of pitcher, he's about the best one you're going to get because that's what holds Dibble back. It's what holds Class A back. That's why when you go watch top 50 players play on Legend, they're using Camillo Doval, not those other two, um, just because you need that sinker, and having that sinker changes up that mix so much from just making him a three-pitch pitcher like those other guys are. Uh, Miller, a very good like kind of backup lefty. You'll see a lot of times if players are playing somebody and they feel like they're going to read Bummer very well, they will go to Andrew Miller. He's kind of the... The plan B for lefties out of the pen for a lot of players right now. Painter, uh, he's going to go A. We're going to see this a lot with this recent drop where a lot of these pitchers are very good. They're not top tier. They're not cream of the crop, but they're good in their own rights and they're fine. Um, but what kind of keeps them all on the, you know, more or less the same playing field is they have the same pitches. SDS was very kind of lazy with what pitches they gave them. So uh, most of them end up feeling very samey, very similar. Uh, Chapman, I'm going to throw him B. I think he's fine. Uh, you know, on All-Star, he'll be good because he has Outlier and you kind of need Outlier to play, be a very good pitcher on All-Star. Uh, and just kind of the intimidation factor of it being Chapman will probably get in some opponent's head on those lower difficulties. Uh, Hall of Fame, I think he's going to suck. And then Legend, he's very good. So... Uh, it's just kind of dependent on what difficulty you're on as to how good Chapman's going to play for you. The Babe, as a pitcher, honestly, I think he's A tier. He's just kind of weird. Um, nothing jumps out of the pa off paper, you know, to you uh, that makes him look super great. 
the sinker really saves his pitch mix he kind of has like a joe random pitch mix but then he's throwing a hundred mile an hour four seam and a 97 mile an hour sinker so that kind of saves him and he's just kind of weird to hit off of i wouldn't say he's dominant i wouldn't say he's a great pitcher by any means but the slow change up in the sinker kind of save him uh and make him just a weird experience to hit off of billy wagner this card sucks i would not be using this card anymore i cannot i can't think of a time in the past where there has been a lefty go-to out of the bullpen reliever that I have hit off of better lefty lefty. The amount of times he's been brought in against Matt Carpenter in events for me, Corey Seager in events for me, against Jordan Alvarez for me, uh, and I've just hit nukes off of him is, is countless already, and we're only a month in. This card's terrible, uh, and I can't think of a worse lefty specialist. Uh, Singer, this card's a joke. You know, he's just kind of here. Uh, he's fine. You can win low all-star games with him. You can maybe even win on Hall of Fame with him. Uh, but, you know, just because you can win with a pitcher doesn't mean they're a good pitcher. All of these previous Team Affinity guys are definitely getting downgraded. You can still run them if you want, but there's no real reason to be using them over these new Team Affinity guys. Uh, maybe you can make the argument that you want more control if you are like an established Hall of Fame player. Maybe you would rather have like Webb, Grinky, um, and Flaherty instead of like Painter. And uh, obviously he's not Team Infinity, but a lot of these guys are. Uh, we just haven't really got to any of them. Here's the first, Dolander. Um, he actually has a little bit of a different pitch mix than a lot of the other Team Affinity guys, so it's a little different with him, uh, but he is still very solid. They more or less have the same hits through nine, the same control, the same pitch mix. They all throw pretty hard, um, and you can't really go wrong with any of them. They're all very solid, which is why they're all going to end up more or less in the A tier. Uh, sale, gimmick pitcher. Always has been, always will be. Uh, you know, people struggle to find his low release, and he is hard to hit lefty-lefty. I will be honest. He's difficult to hit lefty-lefty because it's always hard to sit back on that away slider that's like 79. Um, but he still sucks. He still sucks, and he's still BP for righties against good players. That's why you don't ever see good players running him unless he gets a card that's either like topping out at 99 or uh, has really high hits. So you're not going to see sale get used to often at higher levels more of just kind of a pub stomp pitcher um this cliff lee is horrendous unless you're on legend that's the only caveat and even then every time i think i've seen him really get used against good players on legend he gets mercied um so uh, just a control freak that if you're on legend you can throw him out there you can give him a game or two uh but in general i'd probably stay away Burns is S tier with a caveat. Um, if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know how I feel about Burns. On paper, he is disgusting. In theory, he is disgusting. The problem with him is, ever since he got that lightning card years ago, uh, people have just kind of learned what you want to do with him. They know what you want to throw with him. Him not having a four seam anymore also really hurts him. Um, so he's good on paper, and you can turn out some phenomenal outings with him. Um, but just know he's going to get lit every once in a while he's gonna get lit up like a Christmas tree and you just kind of have to know that uh, the gold burns with inside edge is one of the best budget options in the game if you're on a budget no reason he can't be your five starter for like 2,000 subs especially if he's playing up if he's playing up that makes him a lot better so uh, Bard still good um, kind of has scaled back very similar to the uh, team affinity one from the start of last year where he was really really good at the start of the game and then people started to phase him out uh, he's kind of one trick pony he does throw a hard slider which is nice and kind of keeps him from being a one trick pony uh, but really you're just using him for the outlier sinker that he's topping out at 97 98 99 consistently um, so if your opponent knows that's what you want to do, you got to get a little creative with him. He still has some other decent pitches, but really you just want to throw the outlier sinker. Speaking of just wanting to throw the outlier sinker, Eddie Cabrera is back in the game and he looks phenomenal. He looks great. He looks like he's one of the best five in the game. Is he going to challenge for that 1A, 1B role? No, probably not. Uh, but he is still very solid, and he should give you good outings. I don't think he's going to be dominant like he was in like MLB 21 or whenever that card was, um, but he can still give you good outings. 
So here is class A, kind of what I alluded to with Munoz, where give me Munoz every day. Uh, Munoz pitch mix is superior to just having a four seam, a cutter, and a slider. I'd much rather have that sinker instead of that four seam, um, or instead of that cutter, either one you want to swap out. Um, so for me personally, I would rather have Munoz all day, but uh, a lot of people do get along well with class A. It's just, if you play a good player, they know what you want to throw. He's going to be BP. Uh, speaking of BP, Gagne, if he had an outlier fastball, I'd be down to bump him up a tier. But really, when your opponent brings Gagne out of the pin, you know what they're going to throw. They're going to throw either one of his two changeups, or they're going to throw that EFIS curveball that's thrown at like 70 miles an hour. Uh, and you just got to sit back on it, because usually when somebody brings in Gagne, that's what they want to do. Phillips. Um, Phillips is a top end righty out of the bullpen. If you're on Hall of Fame, if you're on Legend, he's one of the better options you can possibly bring out. On All Star, he has some question marks and he might get lit up. Um, he still has good speed differentials and his pitches kind of work off of each other pretty well. Um, so I think that kind of saves him in that regard. Uh, Felix not quite what he has been in the past in theory right he should be very similar to this Munoz card uh but he's not something about his release this year it's way more readable his outlier fastball doesn't even really feel like outlier every time I've seen Felix this year I've lit him up um so I just don't think he has that special sauce that he has had in the past Fernando obviously I put him in joke tier yesterday I think he's fine he's a gimmick pitcher um, he'll give you probably maybe two, three good innings, but then it's going to all crumble down. Um, he is throwing a lot of junk up there and he's not what he has been in the past. And I think he's going to be absolutely horrendous. I really want to put him C tier, uh, but I'll leave him in B tier. Cause I feel like that's where the consistent consensus is kind of going to be. Speaking of B tier crochet, uh, just not what he was on that future stars card you know him and cabrera used to run it back to back for a lot of people in their rotations um how the mighty have fallen with crochet not really that guy anymore doesn't have an outlier fastball has a very kind of default mix the cutter kind of saves him a little bit but just doesn't really have it will be tough on lefties but you know most people's lineups aren't just all lefties right now uh, especially with kind of the top end meta of starting pitching. Uh, Grayson, just a decent little budget card to shout out. You know, if you're balling on a budget, you can go run the event, win like eight games, you get this card. Um, so not a terrible card, but also not great either. Flaherty kind of goes in with that Brandon Webb and Grinky, where he's fine. If you still want to use him, he can still give you some good outings. Uh, but overall, not really that guy. DeGrom, this card's pretty nasty. Uh, in theory, he's kind of similar to the one last year where everybody thought he would be really good, and he wasn't. Uh, but for right now, where he's at, I think he has 107 or 109 hits through nine, something like that, and his pitching clutch is just as high. So he only has 98, actually, but the pitching clutch is 109. So that's what I was thinking of. For right now, those hits are exceptional. They are very high, um, especially if you start adding some parallels onto them. So he should be good. I uh, haven't personally used him yet, obviously, but in general, he should be good. Mizorowski, if you still want to use this card, I think he's still usable. Uh, he's kind of getting that Corbin Burns syndrome where a lot of people have just seen him a whole lot at the start of this year to where he's kind of becoming BP. They're getting used to hitting off of him. So I would be kind of cautious about pitching him. You know, it just depends on who you queue up against. If you've queued somebody that's seen him every ranked game for the past 20 games, they're probably going to light him up if you've queue against somebody who just hasn't seen him that often or really struggles against hard velo throwing, you know, fastball throwing starters, then maybe they will struggle. Um, but overall, I don't think he's nearly as good as he was when he came out. Obviously, right, because he came out first week. Uh, this Chavez card can cook for you if you're on Hall of Fame and Legend. I would probably stay away if you're on All-Star. Has really high control, should be able to dot. Uh, your opponent's life away you just kind of need to be on that higher difficulty where throwing those slower pitches doesn't impact them quite as much um lazorda not a fan of this card i think he's terrible he is if jose alvarado was a starting pitcher uh we kind of saw it last year right he got this exact same pitch mix except he had an outlier sinker and even that card wasn't that great um he just really struggles to get righties out in my experience he basically 
he feels like a lefty reliever where you do not want him pitching to righties. So if you load into your opponent and your opponent has seven righties or switch hitters in their lineup, he's not going to have a fun day. Jordan might go 0 for 3 against him, but let's be real, it's Jordan. Um, but the rest of the lineup's going to have a field day with him. Palmer, I think this card's solid. Um, I'm teetering between like low A and high B. I think he's fine. I think he's underrated. Kind of has that like catfish hunter kind of change up where it's insanely slow. So if you're on all star, I think he's great because that's what you need on all star, right? On all star, you either need outlier or you need uh, really big speed differentials to try to get some swing and misses. So I like him in that regard. I think he's decent and a lot of people should be getting to him by this point. I think he's at like 450,000 or like 500,000 XP somewhere in there. So a lot of people will be getting hit to him soon. Um, this Joe Nathan card, I think is routinely pretty underrated. I'll probably put him C just cause he's kind of a budget card. Uh, you basically just have to do the giants collection and you get him. He's fine. I like his pitch mix a lot. Uh, I think this card's super slept on has 101 hits. The controls a little suspect. So that's what you're losing there, but you can see the pitch mix is pretty good uh it's not top end but it's pretty good um so i think on a budget he can do we need to speed this up this is long uh john the only thing holding john back is the control can get a little suspect at times he can let some pitches get away from him um and overall his through nines in general are not very good but the pitch mix itself is probably the best in the game he's probably the hardest pitcher to actually hit off of in the game the only thing holding him back is the through nines when he gets a 99 at some point we're not going to be having fun uh franco franco is a good lefty i don't think he's bummer level so if you kind of spent stubs to lock in for this franco early i feel for you uh, probably not the best decision in the world because we got this bummer like the week after most people start getting Franco. Uh, I think I would prefer bummer. He tops out at a higher velo. He has a cutter where I don't believe Franco does. I think he has a screw all circle change slider four seam and a sinker. If I didn't say that. Yeah. So, um, not my favorite he's still a good option he's still in my bullpen just because we're kind of limited in how many bullpen lefties we have right now uh but i would take bummer all day over him hater very similar to miller uh people go back and forth as to which one they prefer in my experience hater has been horrendous for me um but you know that doesn't mean miller would be doing any better if i did own miller uh lefty relievers out the pen are kind of tough to come by right now Richard. Um, so this card's kind of twofold, right? So on all star, he's pretty good because he's a pub stomper that has an outlier fastball and he's going to beat up on some people that can't catch up to outlier fastballs, uh, on hall of fame. He's going to be horrendous. And then on legend, he's actually going to be pretty decent because you can just spam away breaking pitches and it's going to shrink your opponent's PCI and they still have to kind of respect the outlier fastball. So on legend, a sneaky pick, um on all-star pretty good on hall of fame pretty bad i think honestly it might be enough to get him up to a tier um unfortunately with how the game plays this year with the way sliders it kind of makes richard a lot more uh viable than he has been in the past verlander i still think he's a cut below a lot of these other guys um when you look at his hits and you look at the fact that he's throwing 97 they're all throwing 99 the walks are a little high, I guess, and the clutch is a little high, I guess. I don't see it with Verlander, honestly. I don't think he's going to be very good this year. I'll I'll put him up, but I, I don't think he's going to be great. I guess he is about equal to Jim Palmer for me. Um, so if you like those kind of four-seam cutter guys uh, with the slider, Kenley's probably going to be your best option for that if you do enjoy that archetype of pitcher like Class A, like Dibble. Um, but me personally, this Kenley card's a joke. No circle change. They barely gave him a slider. I would have rather had a four seam that he threw a little harder than what he throws the two seam at. Um, so not my favorite pitcher in the world. If they gave him a sinker, if they gave him a circle change, we'd be talking. Um, but unfortunately, they did not. We got kind of spoiled with good Kenley cards last year. Uh, this card is decent he can give you decent outings i think there's better places to go with your captain pick but he can be all right especially on higher difficulties where 
Uh, I don't think he has outlier, but he does throw really hard, so they would have to kind of respect him just having a higher average velo fastball. Um, and he works away with, I believe, a cutter and the fork ball. So he has good speed differentials. He can get some swings and misses. He's not a bad card, um, but he's not somebody I would go to too often. Harrison, this card's horrendous. Uh, the through nines are pretty good, so that's kind of saving him a little bit. But he has one of the worst pitch mixes. Uh, honestly, I think he's kind of burnt at tier. I'm going to need a refresher on his exact hit. So he has 100 hits, which is saving him. But when you look at this pitch mix, this is just horrendous. Slider, slurve, basically the same pitch. One drops a little more vertically, but, you know, if you're on the lower difficulty, people are going to read the slider. They're going to hit the slurve. Um, and then circle change four seam. So, yeah, that card's horrendous. Not a very good card at all. Logan Webb, his teammate. Um, as far as a budget option goes, you're not going to get a whole lot better than this. I almost want to put him A tier, but the through nines are just a little too low for me to want to do that. Um, but a very good budget option. If you have 8,000 subs and there's a gap in your starting rotation, uh, no reason you can't put Logan Webb in there and win some games. Melanson, I think this card is stupidly underrated. You get him from doing the USA map, not a bad pitch mix. Kind of a weird um, delivery. You can see 104 hits. Awesome control, has a cutter, knuckle curve, four seam splitter. So really, you're just kind of working these three pitches. I think he's underrated. I think, I'm not saying he's good, but I think he's underrated. And I think a lot of people could just kind of glance over him a little more than they probably should. Mick Abel, Mick Abel, I'm going to have to look that up by the end of these tier lists. Uh, very similar to Dollander and some of these other guys. Soroka. Um, I want to put him like bottom A, top of B, somewhere in that range. I'm going to bump him up just because he's a 94 overall. Um, he's fine on All Star. He's going to get lit up on Hall of Fame. He's probably going to get lit up. To be honest with you, he's probably a legend pitcher. And on legend, I think there's better options. So, uh, really, I don't see any way to really fit him in. Nick Frosso. Um, a decent card. He it's kind of like a one trick pony kind of pub stomping pitcher has an outlier sinker. Um, and then the rest of his pitches are not very good. But, uh, if you do like that, if you are struggling on all star, because you just don't have a lot of starters that throw with hard Vila, he's not a bad option, but he is 40 K and there's other options on here that are free or significantly cheaper than that. Uh, Noah Schultz looks like he has a lot of potential, honestly, kind of like a lighter type of player. You can see 98 hits, uh, 95 clutch, four seam slider, circle, sinker, slurve. So not a huge fan of having a slurve and a slider, but with the way the game plays this year, that means he's going to be really hard to hit lefty lefty. Uh, he's going to be shrinking PCIs left and right. Um, so I do enjoy him in that. And he'll be able to shrink PCIs against righties because away sinkers actually shrink PCIs on righties. Uh, so he's going to be a machine if you are on those higher difficulties. Speaking of higher difficulties, Noble Meyer. This card is probably only an all-star card because his hits are relatively low. His clutch is relatively low. Uh, but the pitch mix is good and you can make him work. He's very similar to all these other guys. Just uh, he throws a little harder than most of these guys, but he uh, kind of, you know, makes up for it by having bad hits through nine. So honestly, I almost want to put him B tier, but I think he's so similar to the others. It would be kind of, uh, you know, splitting hairs at that point. Nolan Ryan, you know how I feel about Nolan Ryan. Always a pub stomping pitcher. Um, doesn't really do too great on Hall of Fame this year. Doesn't do too great on Legend this year. Maybe in the future, if he gets a better card with crazy hits through nine then maybe he will become more viable in higher difficulties uh but as for this card i don't think he's really worth locking in trout for unless you already have all the other cards in the game not really my favorite card skeins still a insanely good option i wish they would fix his outlier already so he could actually throw hard and um you know do what he's supposed to do on legend it doesn't really affect him it arguably even makes him better because it makes his speed differentials kind of uh more random and all over the place but on every other difficulty it hurts him uh, i use the card in my world series push he really struggled to get outs just because um with his other pitches they are kind of built off the 
fact of him having outlier like you're not going to get great speed differentials if there's a chance of you throwing the four seam at 97 miles an hour um so it kind of sucks in that regard he's kind of still bugged hopefully he does get fixed but uh i think he's only like 15k now right so almost no reason for him to not be in everybody's rotation when he's only 15k um you can make the argument he's similar to these team affinity guys but i think his pitch mix is better so i think that's what's kind of set him apart there uh pedro top of a tier uh if you do traditionally very well with those pitch mixes he can be very good uh, I just think he's super readable. I think he throws the hardest fastball in the game. I think I see him top out at 103, 104 more than any other pitcher in the game. Uh, so that's cool. But overall, his pitch mix is just really readable. Um, and he's just not the greatest in that regard. Rizel, a good go-to righty out of the pen right now. There's just not a lot. All right, when we go through the rest of the list here, there is one other righty reliever on the on the list. You can see there's one in S tier, and there are one, two, two other ones in uh three. Three other ones in this tier, and a lot of you might get be locked out of getting barred. You might not be able to get barred. Uh so out of righty relievers, there's not a ton in the game. Uh he is one of the better options. So it, by default he makes a i don't think he's great but by default he kind of makes it randy you know debatably kind of one a one b one c with these three uh it's really you know these two have the better mix but the grom has better through nines by a lot so you know give or take it's kind of up for debate here dibble kind of the epitome of these like class a type relievers uh, you know what's coming. Can you hit it? That's the name of the game with Dibble every single year. You know what people want to throw you. Uh, you know they want to play mind games with the slider and the cutter. Um, it's really, you know, do you know when the outlier four seems coming? If you do, you're going to have success against him. If you don't, he's going to be tough. Um, Riley Fingers just recently got this card. I think he's good. I don't, he's not a dominant bullpen righty. He never is. He's more of like a finesse guy. He's more of, I'm going to put this sinker in the corner every single pitch. Can you hit it? Do you know when I'm going to throw this 80 mile an hour fork ball? That's kind of, you know, the archetype of him. He's a good change of pace reliever. If you're coming off a guy like Randy or John that's throwing 105, um, you can kind of bring him in, get some outs, get some early rollovers, stuff like that. Ronald Blanco. Uh, this card's horrendous. His pitch mix sucks. The hits through nine are really high, so he's close to Kyle Harrison in that regard. Um, you know, but he is a free card. Harrison's going to run you like 20K. Blanco's free, so uh, I kind of get why people would run Ronald Blanco. No real reason to be running Kyle Harrison. Um, good budget card, Sandy Alcantara. Um, decent. The outlier sinker can do some weird stuff if you're on the wrong server. I know that firsthand. So you can have success with them. As far as a starter card, probably the best starter card I can think of and out of the past few years. Uh, very usable. And if you're no money spent, he can still kind of anchor the back end of your rotation. But he is not the ace that you want to be running out there every five games. Satchel. Uh, this card's horrendous. I'll put him A tier just because he has outlier, right? And it's hard to find pitchers with outlier right now. Um, so I think that kind of makes him, you know, a cut above the rest, but overall, uh, the pitch mix just isn't good with him. Somebody in my comments yesterday was wondering why I was dogging on the 99 one. Um, it's cause his pitches don't complement each other. Really. You're working the four seam with the slider and that's about it. That is about it. The sinker is okay, but the par is always massive on it. Uh, the screwball and the curveball basically do the exact same thing. If somebody's not going to swing at the other one, um, then they're not going to swing at that pitch either. And if you know, if they read it as a hanging curveball and it's the screwball, they're going to hit it anyway. Um, they just aren't really good pitches. Historically, pitchers with screwballs just don't do great, honestly. In DD, it's not a great pitch. Uh, it's better used in like relievers like Devin Williams, right? You can bring in Devin Williams and if you're on the wrong server and if your opponent isn't super dialed in, Devin Williams can get swings and misses because the screwball has a weird timing window. It like breaks before you think it should break and it breaks really fast when it does break. 
Um, so it's good there, but when you're having to routinely throw it multiple times through the lineup, like you do with a starting pitcher, it's just not really a good pitch. It's kind of why we saw Rube Foster kind of flop last year. Shane Bieber, uh, this card's not good, especially for his price. I saw him one game in events, put like seven runs on him in the first inning. He's horrendous. Um, a lot of it has to do with how slow his slider is. When you have an 80 mile an hour slider, uh, it's just, it's too loopy. It gives the batter too much time. Really, when you're throwing sliders in the show, it's either to get swings and misses or it is to jam the hitter, right? That's why a lot of guys like Randy, um, like DeGrom, like uh, John Donaldson, and, uh, you know, Cabrera, people like that. That's why they're successful because the slider is faster than hitters kind of perceive it to be. And it gets a lot of broken bats, it gets a lot of pop-ups, it gets a lot of jammed hits. Um, so you want a fast slider in the show. You do not want to have a loopy slider. Very few times does it work out for you. Uh, the only guy I can think of is actually not on the list. Uh, Leclerc has a really slow slider that kind of works to his advantage just because he's a five-pitch pitcher. Um, but overall, everybody not named Jose Leclerc, I would want a faster slider on. Uh, Shohei is decent. He's all right. Um, on All-Star, he's relatively BP. On Hall of Fame, he can be good. It just kind of depends on who you're playing against. And then on Legend, I think he's actually really good. Um, so I think it kind of depends a lot on the difficulty that you're playing on as to how good Shohei is going to be. Shoto Imanaga, terrible. Absolutely terrible. He goes down here and... Um, I was going to rename it Terrible Pitch Mix, but I'm not going to because some of these guys actually have good pitch mixes. Um, but, you know, most of them, they're here because they're either budget cards or they have god-awful pitch mixes, um, and he fits that description. Taylor Rogers, this card sucks. I thought he was going to be a lot better than he is. On Legend, the card is filthy um, because you're bringing him in as a lefty specialist and pretty much every pitch he's throwing is shrinking the opponent's PCI, assuming he's pitching to a lefty. Um, but you know, on hall of fame, on all-star he's BP. And when he's not BP, he's a foul ball. He's bait for foul balls. He, he his timing windows just aren't very good. He's throwing a four seam like 95 to 98. He's throwing a sinker like 95 to 97. Um, and then he's throwing a slider and the slurve both in the same timing window. So really, uh, I know firsthand because I picked him. What you're going to run into is foul ball, foul ball, foul ball, foul ball. Perfect, perfect. Like that's that's what's going to happen with Rodgers. Unfortunately, unless you are on legend, uh, he is very hard to hit on legend. Thomas White kind of just I saw his pitch mix. Sounds like that guy's decent. Uh, fits in this budget category with like Grayson Rodriguez, where if you're if you're on a <laughs> if you're on a budget, uh, he can be very good for you. But overall, I can't necessarily recommend him. Matzik, I'm gonna put an S tier for some reason has been really solid for me. I never really understand it with Max Matzik cards. I don't think he has a particular. Wow, we need to wrap this up. This is getting bad. Uh, he doesn't have a particularly literally good pitch mix. Um, I think it's just kind of his release and his speed differentials. I like that he's throwing a cutter like five to six miles an hour slower than he's throwing his four seam. Still has a slider to keep hitters honest. I just really wish he had a changeup instead of uh, the curveball, but I still think he's very usable and very good. Uh, Yoshi looks decent. I have not personally used him. I've heard bad things about him, but I think he comfortably fits in this A tier where like if you pitch him, more times than not, I think he'll give you a solid game. He will get lit up occasionally. He's not untouchable like a lot of these guys in S tier are, um, but he's good. You can use him. He won't lose you games, but he's probably not going to be too responsible for you winning either. He's not going to throw a lot of shutouts for you. Um, Grinky, is this the team affinity tier? It is, so he kind of goes in uh, with all these other TA1 pitchers where they're very good. Uh, and they can work, especially on Hall of Fame. But when you get to Legend, or if you're just on All Star, you probably want a little more out of a pitcher. Um, and then we see Alvarado here, very good lefty specialist. Uh, as far as a lefty specialist goes, it doesn't get too much better than this. 
Uh, you can see the hits through nine are kind of low, but uh, the clutch is maxed out, and he's just really hard to hit lefty-lefty with his pitch mix. Basically, throws three fastballs and a curveball, which is not ideal, but uh, if you can tunnel, if you can work pitches right, it can be very hard to barrel him up, especially lefty-lefty. A lot of his pitches are running away from the hitter, shrinking the PCI, makes him a very effective reliever, especially against lefties. And yeah, guys, that is our tier list for the pitching in the game at the moment. Um, this should stay relevant for a while because it seems mm, seems to me like we're only getting content like once a month, basically, in the game. So there might be a program or two that we get here or there between this and the next time I have to update this. Um, but for as of right now, I think I am fairly comfortable with this tier list. Uh, I'd probably stay away from like everybody here and under. Um, they're usable if you really want to use them. I'd try to stay, you know, probably A tier and up. Probably stay towards like Yoshi and stuff as your back end starters. Uh, if you want like the best rotation in the game, you're going to have to run some of these cards. You're going to have to break the bank a little bit. But yeah, guys, that is it. We will be putting out more tier list uh, following this. Uh, we got the infielders, we got the outfielders, and then we'll probably wrap it up with like a top 50 cards. So uh, if you did enjoy the content, if it did help you, feel free to like and subscribe. Till next time, peace.